Uh, come up with a plan of what you want to do. Don't overwhelm yourself with, uh, you know, everything. Don't think, you know, d really um, don't pay attention to the, a lot of the trendy, trendy things on, on Facebook or Instagram. I think we had talked about that before. You know, like you said, I, I even yeah. asked you, you know, what, what made you ask me to, you know, do this podcast? And you said, well, I want to talk to, you know, real people. It doesn't have to be these elaborate, you know, gardeners or homesteaders or right. trust fund people, but <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, you know, getting started. Inside of the city, the people are crazy. Out of their minds, they ain't got a clue. We gone away, headed west for Montana. Left family and friends, all I got now is you. We both got new jobs, a host and a homestead, thinking this was the life. All that there'd be After our first born You had to stay home That's when the work Got in the way for me Well I started Farm hop life You'll come to your farm To help and to wander Me and the family A truck and an RV Send us a message and there will be. This is the Farm Hop Life Podcast, a traveling homestead family. I'm Matt DeRocher. Today, my guest is Slow Cheetah on Twitter. She is a Christian stay-at-home mom with a passion for getting back to the basics and learning how to be self-sufficient in these crazy times. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here in your crazy, crazy... Uh, um, like spread of kids like uh yeah. you, you were telling me just before we recorded um their, their ages and it's like well you got your hands full i'm surprised you even yeah. were able to cut out an hour of your day to be here yeah i thankfully their dad is home right now and i told them you know hey i gotta i gotta go upstairs for a little bit mommy's doing a podcast and i need just need a little bit of time uh for myself so they're hopefully not getting into anything <laughs> but <laughs> we'll they, see so we'll see you in an hour. So how did you, let's just jump right in. How did you get started homesteading? Um, my husband and I always, when we were married, we always kind of envisioned ourselves um, finding land, you know, getting away from the city. However, it just wasn't in the cards. Uh, things happened, plans fell through. And we decided to just, you know, find a place in the suburbs and use what we have as our backyard and do it. And we really didn't start it till a couple of years ago. I want to say maybe early, like late 2019, early mm. 2020. So not very long. Um, he, he decided he wanted, he came up with his own plans. He built our raised beds. Uh, he wanted to get chickens. We went through that process with our city. We got approved, we got a coop, we got our chickens, um, and we've been kind of just really enjoying what what we've started. It's not anything elaborate. We don't have, you know, like I said, we live in we live in a in the suburbs. We only have a small backyard, but we're just using the resources that we've been given and what we've worked for to at least stay a little bit self sufficient, uh, especially sure. with the chickens and um, it's. It's definitely a lot of work. Um, you know, I kind of, I like seeing other people, how they have their setup. And I try not to get too into it where I'm a little bit, I guess, envious of what they have mm -hmm. and just being content with what we have in our backyard. And it's still, you know, it's, it, we've accomplished, you know, a little bit of our goals, um, you know, with just gardening and, and having, getting eggs every day and it's awesome we love it i've there's a lot of you know that that mentality of you know oh i want 20 acres i want 40 acres i want you know a thousand acres to do whatever i want but like the more acreage you have 
the more it really goes to waste, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of people that are like on like, you know, 10th of an acre, quarter acre, whatever, um, that really have to, they're forced to maximize every square foot and they're way more productive about it than a lot of people with more acreage. And mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. And, you know, I, I don't consider myself, I'm, I'm a novice with this. I sure. don't, you know, we've, we've just started, we're still learning um, with what, what works best for what we plant. Um, I mean, our first garden, we, we got a little careless and just planted a whole bunch of random stuff. And that's not always the best idea, you know, plant what you're really going to use um, vegetable wise or, or something. Um, and that's, that was our first, first run. We planted corn. So we had tons of corn stalk in our, in our bed. It was not the, not the best idea. Um, so we've just been gradually learning on, on what we like to eat and what, what, fa you know, what grows faster um, and what's more abundant. Uh, sure. And like you said about the land, you know, a lot of people have all this land, but they don't know what to do with it. And mm -hmm. just, just having something in the backyard is hard enough. It's a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication. And um, with right now with our heat, I mean, we're in triple digits here and I'm in North Texas. And I mean, my plants have been, they got eviscerated. <laughs> it, it, it was not a good, it was not a good season this year. Last year was great. We had a lot of rain, um, but sure. this season has been really hard. Yeah, and uh, shade cloth is expensive if you're trying to protect your plants from mm -hmm. from the the beaten down sun. So if you got just a couple of raised beds to deal with, it's a lot easier than right. row crops, I guess. Yeah. Like I'm ashamed to say, I think I I maybe got I, I think I shared it on Twitter. I, I had my first tomato. And that was my last tomato because <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. It just that my tomatoes weren't producing. They had flowers, but then they just fall off because they got way too hot and I'd water, yeah, but that sucks. The heat has been, I think our highest we've had here was one Oh six. Um, this past two couple weeks. And then apparently it's going to get to one Oh eight, uh, on about Thursday. So it's been, um, it has been good. We've desperately needed rain and we're in a tremendous drought, but. That's too hot. It's very, <laughs> I don't know where you live. But... I'm in the North. I'm in, I'm in Montana right now. And it's oh, like, wow. it's, oh, it's, Montana. it's too hot. Yes. I know. We, we have a, a lot baby. of, what's, well, no, a lot of people just aren't used to it. And even I've lived in Texas all my life. I'm 34 years old and I still every year complain about the heat uh last year was nice we had a ton of rain we had great i mean our garden was great because we had rain every couple days it was wonderful and this time it's just you know non-existent yeah rain ref definitely makes the difference i was um total, total side uh side track here um there's this there's this YouTuber that I just came across. I don't even remember his name, but he just, he, he released like a, like a series of videos on like ranching. And it, I guess mm -hmm. the series starts in Texas and then he's making his way all the way up to like Montana. And the first episode I watched down in Texas, um, they're like rain. It, I don't even know how many acres they have, how many, what, what the head of cattle is, but it's very, it's a big, big, uh, big ranch and they're like rain is everything here like mm -hmm. when we don't get like they they went like a couple of years without good rain and they had to sell off like two-thirds of their cattle just because mm -hmm. like they um just couldn't couldn't hold them couldn't, right couldn't really supply what they needed with through the cattle I'm like dang that's crazy right um, yeah we, we really all those genetics that they've been working on do what all those genetics that they were working on they just like some of them that some ranchers, they just had to like sell them all and basically start over Yeah, all those yeah. generations. So appreciate the rain. Um, I don't see it anywhere in the near future for a while. I, I'm pretty sure August will probably be even worse. Um, or maybe, maybe it might slow down. I don't know. It's just, 
you never know, honestly. Um, right. And the conspiracy right. theorist of myself is, okay, someone's trying to cook us or something. <laughs> so I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, it's usually not this hot uh, lately, but for some reason, 2022 was just, it's been a scorcher. Yeah. Where's that geoengineering when you need it? I that's what I'm saying. You know, maybe you those can aluminum nanoparticles and yeah, geoengineer some rain. I know they've done it in deserts before, uh, where they haven't had rain yeah. in a desert. You know, I don't know how many years, and then they they get rain all of a sudden. Who would have thought? Right. It snows in like Middle East and stuff. Right. And come on, China, yeah. save us. They <laughs> Please, they, they do it all the time. Come on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what made a, well, wow, can't talk. Um, what motivates you to grow your own food? Um, what motivates me is just, you know, being more self-sufficient, not having to rely on somebody else for food. Um, I, I enjoy, I enjoy planting. My kids enjoy it. Um, it's a good teaching, uh, you know, it's a great teaching, I can't even think of the word, uh, teaching experience for yes. them. And it makes them enjoy it. And hopefully down the road, they'll want to do the same thing with their families. Um, because it's, it really, it's, it's, um, what's the word? I'm trying to think. I cannot think right now. I'm trying to think. It's, That's uh, okay. it's Sunday afternoon. We're both struggling here. <laughs> it's, like, it's right there and I can't think of it. It's great. No, I just, it motivates me as my kids and, and teaching them how important it is. Um, because you never know. Everything is just, um, there's another word I can't think of. Oh my gosh. There's just so much unknown. You know, you, you, we right. don't know if things could crash, if, you know, the supply chain would be, be worse. Um, and I've, I've never wanted to, I've always liked to even cook at home. I don't even like going out to eat a lot. Um, that's always been my my thing. It's just basically not relying on somebody else. That's what really motivates me is to, sure. like I said in, in my bio, is to go back to basics. And with the little that we do right now, it, it still makes a difference. And in, at the end of the day, it's rewarding. Um, being able to see your kids excited to see a tomato growing. You know, you know that they were the one who maybe planted the seed or they were the ones who watered it and they go out there and check on things. And, you know, they just get so excited. It's, it's different seeing a, seeing, you know, a pepper grow off your plant than just grabbing it from the store. Um, yeah. And so I think that's what really motivates me and just, you know, really working for something that you enjoy um, and try to be better at it, you know, continue learning from other, you know, experts that have, you know, done well with their, their gardens and, um, that sort of thing. So I would say what motivates me is my, my kids and just, you know, continue learning and be more self-sufficient. So you, you don't like going out to eat that much. Um, has that always been the case or is it just more, uh, is that more the case in recent years? Um, it's been really, I, I grew up, we didn't do that when I was growing up as a kid. My mom was, she was a stay at home mom herself. She mm. cooked a lot. And, you know, sometimes my dad could, he was out of a job at times and we really had to buckle down and, you know, eating, going out to a restaurant was a special kind of occasion. It wasn't an mm. everyday, you know, three meals a day. And when you get older, you realize, wow, it really adds up to wasted money when you oh, yourself definitely. could, could, you know, have those ingredients. It doesn't take a lot of time and it probably will taste 10 times better at home than some other restaurant. And from what I've heard, the restaurant industry has really kind of gone down a little bit just with service wise and food wise. Oh, um, definitely, yep. And, and, you know, I, I like cooking at home. I've, that's another, it's brings me joy. My kids, you know, love everything I make and it's, I just, I, I'm not a big restaurant person. It's just every now and then um, for a special occasion or if I'm really in a pinch and I'm, you know, mommy's not, not in the mood for 
cooking right now and we'll go grab something really quick. But usually mm-hmm. we, you know, about 90% of the time we cook at home. Nice. Yeah. I, I asked because like we also cook at home quite a lot. Um, when I was growing up, maybe like maybe once a week, mm-hmm. was, it wasn't out of the ordinary. We'd go out once a week, like let's say a Friday night or something, go to Chili's <laughs> and, uh, right. um, it, especially I noticed in the last few years, like the, like the quality of the food and the service and just general overall, like satisfaction has definitely gone down. Um, like, like, Oh, I used to like eating here, but something's just different. Like, you know, it's just, I don't know. just not that, not that into it anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's just all the things combined make it like just less enjoyable or you're just like, I, I just like this taste, this just doesn't taste as good anymore. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's not just no, one I, thing. I, I think a lot of, I mean, we don't go to, you know, that's not our thing to go is, to, you know, a lot of people, they like to go on the weekend. That's all they do. They go out to eat, they go to a bar or whatever. And um, it's nice every once in a while, but not, you know, every weekend. Cause if you really put the pen, pen to it, you could be spending a lot of money that you don't need to be, spending it on because you gotta you gotta think of okay you gotta order this and you gotta order your drink then you gotta order um then then the tax and then the tip that all adds up and you could have probably used that money to buy groceries and you could have made something yourself yeah at home and it probably would have tasted better or you know and that and that's what i think right now is you know in this day and age we have everything at our fingertips. We have apps, we have recipes galore. Just, you can Google it. And there's so many things that you can learn how to make that don't take a lot of time. I mean, how many cookbooks are there where it's, you can make something in 30 minutes? 30 minutes isn't a long time. It'll take you longer just waiting in a restaurant to wait to sit down and then wait for your food. Eventually the, the server will bring you your stuff, may not check on you the whole time, you know, when you need your drink, you know, refilled or whatever. Um, so it's, you know, that appeal, it, it doesn't appeal to me anymore. I guess when you get older, you just become more of a homebody, I guess, in your thirties. Um, every now and then it's, it's nice to go out, Yeah. but doing the day to day, going from restaurant to restaurant, I just don't see the appeal to it. Um, when I know I have this, I'm able to go do ahead. that myself. Um, I was just going to say real quick, uh, I have this theory and I don't know when a theory becomes a law, but, uh, when, where, when you get like the closer you are to your food, the less you have to do to it to actually make it taste good. So like, if you, let's say you raise like meat birds or something like that, like a little bit of, I don't know, olive oil, salt and pepper, maybe some garlic mm-hmm. or whatever chicken's done like that's it that's all you really need to do to make it taste taste amazing you know yeah i i agree and i think in a in a way and i i don't want to get political in a sense like we talked about before but 2020 in a way was a good thing because it made people slow down and then realize wow i didn't know i could actually do this now i'm at home i'm able to cook for my family it tastes better or just, you know, I don't, I can't tell you how many people I knew that were making bread and yeast was not, it, it was not on the shelf during 2020 because people yeah. were learning bread for themselves. Um, and they kept doing it. I, I don't know. I don't know how many people were, uh, then, and maybe since everything's kind of gone back to the normal, if you want to say in quote, um, if they're still doing that or they just could not wait for the restaurants to be back open. So they're, you know, like, Oh, thank God we don't have to do this anymore. It may be too hard. Right. But, um, we, we were a little bit different. We thought we kind of buckled down and, and said, man, man, we have to, we just keep coming up with ways on how to, um, rely more on ourselves with what we have at home. Um, and back, I want to say last year, my husband, there was a farm in Weatherford, Texas, and they have, you know, it's grass-fed beef, and they sell it by the quarter, the half, 
before you could buy the whole cow. And we bought a deep freezer and we've been, you know, stocking that, that baby up for a long time. Nice. Uh, and, it, and it really wor- it works out. Um, it's worth it. Absolutely. So you say that, that you have raised beds, like that, I, I would say that's, that's a method or a technique in, in growing, um, growing your own food. What, why raised beds and what other like methods or uh, practices do you use when um, you grow your own food? I guess it was, my husband just came up with the, I, I mean, we've seen some that are a lot, um, I guess closer to the ground, if you'd say ours are a little higher. Um, I guess it just makes it a little bit more convenient. Uh, and he, yeah. I can't tell you how many, how many pounds of soil he bought, like how many bags. I can't tell you the number. It took a long time to put that I together. Bet. It's just, it's just easier to access, um, uh, the plants. You know, you don't have to crouch down. Like I said, we're, I'm in my thirties. I don't want to be crouching mm-hmm. down all the time. Um, you know, weed eating and he, he made it really look nice. He, he did a good job. He fenced everything in. So our chickens don't get into the area, which I know they probably would. Um, so raised beds was, I grew up, my, my parents didn't have that and I could see how they struggled, you know, just crouching down, digging through all this stuff. Um, and I, I prefer raised beds, you know, myself and, you know, I was really proud of my husband. He just kind of drew up some plans built it himself and that's what we use and maybe maybe we'll expand on it um later on to grow more things uh because we have a we have a big playground in the in the backyard that the kids they really don't plan on anymore so we'll probably get rid of that and expand um with maybe doing some more raised beds in the near future um how high do you know how high your raised beds are? Mine are two feet off the ground. I want to say mine are about case. two. They're they're about two and a half, maybe three feet off the ground. Wow, that is high. They're that, little, would, they're little, <laughs> that would be a lot of soil. Yeah, it is. I I want to say it was maybe over two hundred bags. Plus, I think we Whoa. Put, it was a lot. He did have help. A friend, I think a friend of his came and helped went helped him, and I. I the guys at Home Depot were probably so sick of loading the bags. They gave him, I think, 10 free. Just, just take them. I don't, wanna, <laughs> I don't want to load anymore. Um, That's funny. Because he just kept kept coming back. He he thought he'd have enough. And they said, oh, darn, I don't have. I need to go get more. Um, so Dude, that's what we're. the pallet. I know. He, he could have. I don't know how his truck would have appreciated that. It probably would have been <laughs> a little little kind of like drag into the street but that would be that would be funny though that'd be like how how'd you break the rear axle of your truck or whatever and like oh i was hauling bags of <laughs> garden yeah. soil from home depot I think, I just think bought the whole pallet yeah this past year he it wasn't soil it was firewood he had a ton of firewood in his truck and you could tell it was a little too low than it needed <laughs> to be <laughs> And that's another I thing. I suppose in do. North Texas you would uh you would need some sort of heat a uh, little bit in the in the winter, I'm assuming. Yeah, and that was uh we had the we called it snowmageddon here. I'm sure there was other oh, words that's for right. it. In uh February of twenty twenty one. Mm-hmm. A lot of people lost power. That was another thing. They didn't have power, they didn't know how to how to um utilize their fireplace to feed themselves. I mean we didn't have power for a good day. It would fluctuate. Um, and so it got cold in the house. We did have a little bit of firewood. And that was, we had to, again, we had to rely on somebody else to bring in firewood from, um, there's a town called Burleson. It's about south, about 30 minutes south of us, as if you're going to Waco, Texas. And a guy drove up a trailer of nothing but wo- wood because people didn't have any. They didn't store it during wow. the year. We made the mistake of not doing that. So that was an eye opener for us. And my husband, he he kind of flipped it around. He said, you know what? I'm going to start driving around, finding wood that people, you know, cut down trees. It's a nice little angle. 
you know, people cut down trees, they just leave the wood at their curb, hoping, you know, the, the trash people will pick it up. He takes it. He cuts Why it up. Would trash people pick up wood. That seems well, weird. they have, we have a, we have a, um, we have a regular trash, um, I guess, provider. And then we have another one where you call it your bulk. So anything mm. trash related, like you've you know, like a bed or something big, they just, okay. and then they put it in the truck and it, you know, they, they crush it. But mm. yeah, people will do that with their wood and he picks it up. He cut, he has a log splitter, cuts it up and then he resells it. Mm. It's a nice, nice, nice little, uh, kind of little secret there. <laughs> little secret. A little secret. <laughs> That's not bad. I've I've stolen uh, bags of leaves from the side of the road. I wouldn't say that's stealing. If they're already bagged up, that they're. Uh... Yeah, but it sounds funnier <laughs> that you stole ba- that you stole bags of leaves. It, I honestly don't consider it stealing either. Like, don't put them there if you don't want them. And uh, mm-hmm. when I did that, I found all kinds of like weird stuff after I spread it out in the chicken run, like uh-huh. like little little like toys, um, just. Sometimes some garbage, like plastic and twist mm-hmm. ties and stuff. But uh, uh, a pair of like, do you remember? You remember those like clear goggles you would have to wear in science class? Yeah, I found yeah. a pair of those in there, which I was like, why does anyone even have that? But I don't uh-huh. know, whatever, maybe they're an old science teacher. But <laughs> um, where where you're at? So you had to get uh, the the idea of getting approval for chickens and stuff uh, is insane to me. I'm sure it, even though you had to do it, it seems insane to you too. What, yeah, what is that like? Um, well, our city didn't allow chickens. And I know I know people probably had them illegally like in the city. And who can, chickens. If, they don't, if they don't do anything, I mean, here's here's the problem with, with cities. And thankfully, mm-hmm. we don't live in an HOA. When my husband and I looked for a house, we said, we are not living in an HOA. I'm not going to pay somebody to um, basically allow my neighbors to stitch on me if I'm not right. doing something that they approve of. I, I won't stand for that. Um, and we found a neighborhood that was non HOA. HOA. However, our, our city hadn't allowed chickens and they never allowed it for years, years and years. And finally, there was enough signatures from people who wanted them. And I went to the city. There was uh, one of the councilmen did it. He did all the I guess, wrote everything out and it got approved. Um, And so you cut it. It seemed like it was a little bit intimidating or just because they they said, okay, well, you got to show us your coop that you're going to, you know, what your plans are, where you're going to put it. You have to have the animal control people come out there and approve the the area have to it has to be so far away from the fence. Um, And they said, you know what? Okay, fine come in my backyard. I don't like that idea, but come in here and see where our coop is. And it, and it really wasn't intimidating. It wasn't overwhelming. They, it seems like it on paper, but when you actually do it, huh. it's not bad. You know, it sounds joys insane. Of, joys of, it does sound insane. You know, the joys of living in the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they came in, they really, usually the animal control people don't care about stuff like that. They just said, Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. That's great. So all that work, you know, all that. Kind They're of like, stress. cool. Now I have this extra thing to do. Like, yeah, I didn't exactly. really want this, but the city's making me to... do this. Yeah. No one wants to be back there, you know. And, was, and they said, oh, okay, cool. Great. Awesome. And they do, they put a limit on how many chickens you have. Um, roosters aren't allowed because of the noise, which sure. that's another thing. You know, people are allowed to have five dogs here in the city, but you can't have a rooster. You know, I, mean, I would say five dogs are more loud than one little rooster. But Even so one we, dog could be louder than one rooster. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So they said, and this is, I guess, the little, I don't know, rebel with my husband and I. They said, okay, well, you're only allowed six chickens. And so we said, okay. Uh, we went to the freed store. We saw chickens. And I said, I'm not going to do six. I'll do 11. And then I came back. You know, chicken math is real. Six chickens mm-hmm. equal really, you know, not a lot. Uh, one chicken is, you know, three to me. <laughs> so right. I went and got 11 chicks. And then I said, you know what? I'm going back for three more the next day. So we have 
we have a gaggle of hens back there. The <laughs> city hasn't come by and, you know, seen if we have the correct amount listed in their restrictions. Yeah. And no one's bothered with us. And it, you know, if you have more, you're obviously going to get more eggs. And mm-hmm. this past year with the heat, you know, if we, th- if we did the city approval of, oh, six chickens only, I've lost two already in the heat. Oh, so if six, then I'd be down to four. And then what if another two died? So th- them limiting you with that is, I-, I think it's, I don't know, probably they have some reason. They, they, I think that they they give you your way, but then they kind of take your rights away a little bit of, oh, well, you're only limited to these chickens. That way you probably can't sell or barter or whatever. Sure. Um, just, just to make you happy. Well, no, I want more. I, I'm not I, happy. I, I don't want to be upset. How many chickens I have? No, I, I want a whole bunch. I have, I have kids. We have, we eat a lot of eggs in the house. Um, yeah. I have eaters. So we have, honestly, I think we have maybe 18 back there now. We've got, we had to get a couple because two died. Mm. So, yeah. You could, say like people just keep throwing them over the fence i don't know i know i mean they can't it it, It does happen right it just happened you know i i don't know what happened (laughs) so but they i don't think they even care like they don't come around and and see oh they don't have six chickens in their yard and i make sure this is kind of what i do i i've given eggs to both my neighbors on either side not the ones in the back just to kind of you know, hey, as long as you don't say anything about the noise, because hens are noisy too. They can be, yeah. Doesn't especially it? when they're laying, they just get right, just get loud and rowdy. And, yeah, and some are just loud just to be loud for for That's some. I have one, she just sits there at the back door and screams. I don't know why, <laughs> but so I I do that with my neighbors. Like, oh hey, here's a dozen a dozen eggs for you. Um, Plus you know, and <laughs> about the noise. That's all I ask you to do. <laughs> but there you go. What, what have you tried that worked well on your property? <sighs> worked well. I don't know. Like could be plants. It could be um, a breed of chicken. It could be. Um, we I definitely, we definitely, um, we do a lot of tomatoes because those are easy to take care of and they produce you know it depends on what kind of tomato if you get like cherry you get a lot a lot there um Mm -hmm. plants that we that produce well and don't take a lot of maintenance we had we had eggplant in the back of our our bed one year and that was that was not a good idea it was a huge Mm. plant and only produced like maybe one eggplant it was kind of maintain it was hard to maintain that um so we decided, okay, we'll just do a few things in the bed that will make a lot of, like I said, peppers. Those are easy to take care of. Uh, tomatoes. With our chickens, we made sure we got good egg layers. Nothing, you know, none of these like fancy ones with, you know, like they're pretty to look at, but they're not, they're not good at, at egg laying. You know, I, they're cute, but I want a hen that will be producing at least an egg a day for me <clears throat> so we got some dominique we got the dominique breed we got some production reds and they've been very good layers um nice. for a while so garden wise i would say you know I, like i said i'm still learning um you know the the trick i've learned is is oh definitely here don't plant early uh plant around april where our zone is um, mm-hmm. one of our mistakes was we planted early and then the very next day we had a, a light freeze. So oh no. Every single plant, every single plant was gone. So we had to wait another week or two to plant more. That was rough because just so much money was wasted on the plants that we had already put in the work of planting or I did have some seeds <clears throat> in the house. So we, we were able to transplant those little ones. Um, so I would say, you know, my definitely with, when it comes to chickens is get good layers. Don't, don't fall for the trend of, Oh, get a little, 
a silky, which those are super cute. Uh, they're not normally the best egg layers from what I've heard from, you know, other people's experiences. Um, um, you already answered the next question before I could ask it. Oh, whoops. Other, other, no, 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 no. That's totally fine. Uh, it's just, they just work right together. Uh, other than, um, planting too early because of a light freeze. What else have you tried that failed or didn't work well? Uh, what was one of the plants I tried keep? I tried, I tried planting a lot of lettuce and that didn't mm -hmm. do well the heat. Also, I got a little bit of it for enough to make a salad and then the heat just got it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, and I'm also a seed hoarder. I've been hoarding seeds like, like no other. So this year, I'll be honest, our, our garden hasn't been that great because of the heat. And I've had to really shift my, my time from that to just keeping my chickens alive. Um, since it's been so bad here. Um, and really, really learning, especially with with plants and, and pests, like which ones kind of, you know, attract more pests around around your garden. Uh, how to keep how to keep you know slugs away because that's another thing that happened in our garden. It was just you just constantly learning, and it's constant fail sometimes, and you just try not to get too discouraged over it. Um, you know, and regroup for next year or next season. Right. What would you say the biggest challenge in homesteading is that you faced? Um, is it the HOA or something else? I think the biggest. No, no, sorry, not the HOA, the city. I apologize. Well, the city, they, they don't, there's not, there's no sort of restrictions on gardens. Um, you know, in the past you've, you've heard where, you know, if, the government wasn't going to allow you to have a garden. I think that was a long time ago, but people still do it, you know, and there's no, there's no reason for them to tell you what you can and can't do in your backyard. If you want to have a garden, build it, um, you know, just start, just start doing it with the chickens. It was different, I guess, cause they're animals or they're farm animals, but with a garden, you know, I know even if you have an apartment, just get some pots from, Home Depot and plant a tomato plant or blueberry or something, you know, yeah, you, don't, you won't have a big, you know, elaborate garden or, or homestead like a lot of people do on the internet, but at least you're starting something where you're, you're growing it yourself and you're, you know, like I said, being a little more self-sufficient, even if you're in an apartment or a suburb, you can still do those things. It's just taking the time to do it and having that, that drive to do so. So would you say the challenge then is getting started and the learning curve? Definitely. Yeah. Just getting started, not, not sitting on your hands and saying, Oh, I'll eventually do it. I'll, I'll do it this next year or that year. Um, just, I, I would just say, just start. Like I said before, we have so much information at our fingertips of, mm -hmm. of what we can do. I mean, the sky's the limit at this point. If you're, if you're willing to, you know, start a little garden, do it. If you want to get a couple of chickens. Yeah. If your city has some little rules here and there, just do it, get it done. It's going to be so much more worth it when you get to go out in your backyard. You don't have to be on 10 acres to go out to your chicken coop and get an egg or two for your breakfast that morning. Absolutely. I think another thing that's overlooked is, Okay, let's say you didn't you didn't really want to like jump in head first into owning a garden or chickens. If you got neighbors that do, I don't know a single one that wouldn't want to, like wouldn't want to share their knowledge with you or even like um, their harvest. Like if you went over there once a week, twice a week, or you know on the weekends or whatever, for them to like you know to help weed, to help plant, to help harvest, uh, you know, to learn how to make salsa or whatever out of those mm -hmm. tomatoes. And stuff. Like, so that way, like you're still learning these skills and whatever, but you could also like 
you can just dabble. You can put a toe in the water, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's way overlooked. And then you get to know oh, your neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. And and there's even, um, at our library, there's always classes where people will come in where they're invited. They could be a master gardener. They could be, um, you know, whatever. And they'll they'll tell you tips and tricks of what they've learned, especially with our zones here in, in Texas and what, what the do's and don'ts are. There's so much provided um, now. And it's even kind of become trendy on on the internet and maybe that that will ignite someone to to maybe do the same you don't have to go buy a ton of land like like we were talking about in the beginning mm -hmm. but you, you can use your backyard you can use your patio in your apartment complex um there's just so much and like you said before with people willing to um give advice absolutely i i hope nobody kind of holds their knowledge in when they could just share it with somebody else who's willing to, um, who's willing to learn and want to do these things for themselves and their family. Yeah. What would you say the best part about homesteading is? Uh, just being outside, going outside. That's pretty great. On your, checking on your plants, um, being out in, you know, nature. Yeah. I'm in a little backyard, but I, I enjoy it. I enjoy going out there and watering and checking on my chickens. And I said before with my kids, you know, sometimes they'll even beat me to it. Um, when we've had our, a successful garden, not that's mm -hmm. gotten, you know, annihilated by the sun, but they've even beat me to go pick something, green bean or tomatoes, something. Uh, and so it's just, it really is, it's a joy. I, I like doing that. Some, a lot of things, you know, that's, that's why I find joy is, is doing stuff like this. Not, I guess, whatever new thing is out there in the, the modern world. I don't know. I'm more, I guess I'm an old soul in a way. I mean, you wouldn't be going back to basics if you didn't enjoy those, those parts of it. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's always something new, new to learn. I've, I've learned how to make my own bread. Um, eventually I'd like to learn canning when I do have a good harvest, um, right. garden. uh, I've been, I've been looking into that and seeing what kind of supplies I need. It's just overall, it's, I, I hope everyone, it may not be for everybody, but I highly recommend it to anybody who's, who, uh, wants to do the same. So I don't, I don't, I'm not into, you know, sports games or that kind of, I guess, trendy stuff that's out there. I'm more, not a homebody, but I like taking care of my home. I'm a, I'm a stay at home mom. I, that's my job is to, yeah. you know, be at home, cook, you know, good meals for my kids, healthy meals. Um, you know, all of that is kind of comes in a big package. And it's a responsibility. It's not always fun sometimes, but I still, I still do it every day because that's what I'm, what I'm called to do. Was that a difficult decision to shift? Uh, I'm assuming, how did, how did you, what was the transition from whatever you were doing? Like, like, did you go to college or did you skip college and you were just in the workforce and then um, got married got and had kids and then. When I, when I graduated, um, I decided to work instead of go to college for a little bit. I was a, sure. I was a server. I was in, I was in the, you know, restaurant industry mm -hmm. and I saved and I saved and I saved a lot of money. I squandered a lot too, but I did save, which eventually when I, when I was able to, I did, I never finished college. It just wasn't, you know, I really wasn't into it. I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted, to, what I wanted to be. And then I got, you know, married and had kids. My, my husband basically said, you know, I'd rather you just be at home. I'll, I'll go out there and, and be the one providing financially, but I'd really want you to stay at home with the kids. Um, and that's what I did. And the money that I saved and when I worked, when I was 18, 19 years old, I was able to put a little bit of down payment on our house, on a car. Nice. 
And um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I, I, my, my parents had given me the option. Okay, we well, can go to college, but you got to pay for it yourself, you know, so you can work too and pay for your classes. And I decided to work and just save a lot of money. And, and it, it worked out in the long run. Yeah. So. Um, were you and always. The mom too. I always wanted to, to do that. I, I didn't my, see myself in the, in a career either. I did, but then I you, did. You cut out right at the beginning there. Um, you oh. said you always wanted to be a mom too. Right. I always really wanted to be a stay at home mom. Nice. I, you know, I thought I'd be a, a veterinarian one day and then I decided mm. a lot of school and that's going to be a lot of time that I would be putting towards school when I could probably have a family and spend time doing that instead. So I'm overall, I'm grateful for my husband who he goes out and he, he does what he does. And he, he yeah. will even tell me I'll do two, three jobs if it takes for you to stay home with the kids because he knows how much it's, how beneficial it is for them sure. uh, to have their mom at home. So not only do you stay at home with them, but you also homeschool your kids too. Was yes. that, um, were you always going to homeschool your kids? Was that uh, always the plan? Yes, because I was a homeschooler myself. Oh. Um, and my husband was too. I, I went to a private school when I was in kindergarten um, and I never made it to public school after, you know, in first grade, my mm. parents and my mom was actually really involved in the public school. She was the president of their PTA and she, she and my, my had dad decided to, they were going to homeschool and it was, um, it was hard work. It was a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrificing. So I saw what they did. I experienced it myself growing up as being a homeschool kid. And I, I wanted to do the same with my kids. Um, because it, and, and another thing, it's not for everybody. A lot of people don't want to homeschool, which is fine. Um, I just mm -hmm. knew that it, it would be really beneficial for my kids. Um, and I knew I was qualified to do it. You don't have, if you're a mom and maybe you're stay at home, you don't have to be a qualified teacher to teach your, your little ones to read or to write. You can, you can do that yourself. It will it take a lot, you know, take a lot of time and sacrifice. Absolutely. But I, I'm willing to do that, do that too. Do you have a method or formula or anything like that for your homeschooling your kids? Not necessarily. I don't, I'm not a big proponent on buying a, a you know, those really expensive curriculums that are out there because it could be, it could work or it could be a big waste of money. And here in Texas, Texas is one of the most lenient states with homeschooling. Mm -hmm. You, you basically can do, you don't, you don't have to show your curriculum uh, to whoever a school to approve you to be a homeschooler. Uh, you don't have to be in, under an umbrella school in some certain states. You can pretty much do as long as it's reading, writing, uh, arithmetic, and then good citizenship, and then you can supplement with other things, um, and and that's how I how I do it. And my my kids are young. My my oldest daughter, she's she kind of she. My mom really helps halfway with her stuff. She will do oh, nice. some stuff with her, yeah. And she's I'm I'm grateful that she is willing to do that. Um, and she's just introduced her to other things like the arts and. Uh, you know, because I, I have to devote a lot of my time to my little ones, too. And so it's nice that she's we are able to trade off with my older daughter. Um, but I really don't have a, you know, I just I find books on a, either a Christian book site, find these that that will work for them and what what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are and what you know, how you devote your time to that. Yeah, that's. It, it's always very, is, is it difficult um, trying to figure out what works best for each child? Because I can see how like, let's say your, your oldest daughter, you know, learned 
a specific subject a specific way like this worked really well for her and then the next one not so not so much need to tweak it or go go like a completely different way and then the ones after that um completely different as well is that difficult to kind of navigate and figure out it it is but you you actually uh notice it pretty quickly you you can tell child likes reading more and which child maybe not maybe they need a little bit more work on that um Mm -hmm. but if you see something where it ignites in them if if it's science you know if they're really interested in science you dedicate a lot of that to to them because that's what they're interested in and Mm -hmm. you can go to the library find all sorts of you know science books or if they're into animals or if they're into plants or you know that it's it uh it works out because like I said, I'm at home so I can devote more time to them uh, one-on-one or even, you know, three-on-one. Sometimes I do subjects with all three of my younger ones together. Oh, wow. So they all learn at the same time. And then we'll, they'll have a book that's more geared to their, their grade level. Um, and then I can devote more reading time to my older, my second, my middle child. Uh, so, like it's it's me being at home works really well, especially homeschooling, because I'm able to devote more time to my kids one on one than they would get in a, you know, a public school. How much how many hours a day would you say it takes your kids to do the homeschooling thing? On average, um, mm-hmm. I would say probably about three hours during That's the day. Nothing. It isn't. And you'd be surprised That's awesome. if you do in that time. Um, and then later on, we, we do a lot of reading. Uh, we've been doing reading during the summer mostly. There's other subjects, not so much. Um, but yeah, three hours. That's all it takes. And sometimes you, you can see, you don't, I don't like to have them just sit there at the, at the um, table doing their work all at once, you know, straight through. Because you can tell that they, they don't want to sit down all that time. They need to get up. They need to move around. They need to go play for a little bit. And um, I usually give them a little five minute break between books. Sure. Just not, you know, where it just feels, ugh, I don't want to sit here and do this for three hours. So we split up, you know, they'll get breaks in between some of their subjects. And when you have little ones, it doesn't take any time at all, especially if you have like a preschool or something, you just sit there and read to them. I mean, children, sure. children who are read to, I mean, it's just their brains are just working, you know, nonstop. They're little sponges and they'll, they'll learn all right. the information that you're, you're teaching them. And then, and then it makes them want to read and have a joy of reading and being read to. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy uh, what, what they pick up. Do you, so you're, you're learning you know, you're getting back to basics and you're learning new stuff to be self-sufficient. What, what kind of new trades are you working on yourself and which trades do you suggest people learn? Um, me personally is, is learning how to make bread. That doesn't take any specific kind. Uh, I, I, I see a lot of people doing those beautiful sourdoughs (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I, wow, those look amazing. But I found a, a, just a, simple artisan bread that I make in the morning and sometimes it doesn't last the next day, but so I have to make another one, but that's what I've, I've been learning how to make bread and perfecting that recipe. And sometimes it does work all the time, especially when you have humidity here in Texas that will really throw off your, the rising of the dough. Um, I've been doing that. I said, I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to can I love collecting jars. <laughs> I just haven't put anything in them yet. Um, <laughs> They'll come in handy one day. They will come in handy one day. Um, so if, I wouldn't really say it's a trade. It's more of learning something to make extra money is I've um, learned how to make, I, I decorate sugar cookies. And actually oh, I have nice. a Twitter for that. And I've been able to, I decorate those and I sell them. So it's kind of like a little side business that I do outside of my house um, just to make, you know, a little bit here and there. 
it, it's fun. It keeps myself busy. Um, I'm trying to think of a different trade, really. I would just say, you know, making bread and and learning how to build things, you know, will, be willing to learn or be taught something different. Um, so I, w- I would say really, if, if you're wanting to start something, start making bread. It's really easy. It, it doesn't take a lot of time. And it's so much better than the stuff you get at the store. How far do you take it? Like, do you, are you grinding your own like wheat or, or no, whatever? Um, I'm not there yet. And I did find a little, okay. a little, I guess it's a mill that you could get. It's, it's, it's an investment, but where you could actually like grind up your own, you know, wheat to make your own flour. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm been lusting over that thing. Um, but I'm just not willing to pull the trigger yet and get it just yet. So I'm just, you know, using sure. standard, you know, all purpose flour. And, um, gotcha. it's definitely one of the ingredients of what you see on the back of a bread at the store. I mean, my goodness. I can't read half the stuff that's, you know, <laughs> on, on those, those packages. Um, Definitely. so like I said, with a trade, that's kind of a hard question. I've just, just, you know, I don't know. I would like to learn how to, how to actually do carpentry and, and stuff, you know, build more things. Hmm. My husband's more into that, but <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I guess I'm I seeing a lot more female, whether it, like it be like on Twitter or YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or any of them. Like, there's a lot of female like profiles out there that are doing just that. You know, whether it be carpentry or plumbing or just like fixing basic stuff. Like, it's mm-hmm. becoming way, way more popular. Um, yeah, and and you can. And I think that's good. Right. And you, you, there's so many videos on YouTube, even if it doesn't have to really pertain to, to homesteading, but just working on your car, learning how to do yeah. it's all there. So where you don't have to rely on somebody else, you know, have to pay them a couple hundred bucks to, you know, fix this in your house or, you know, fix a toilet or, you know, whatever you can do it. You can do it yourself. Yeah. Um, what would you tell people that want to get started? Uh, come up with a plan of what you want to do. Don't overwhelm yourself with, uh, you know, everything. Don't think, you know, d- really um, don't pay attention to the, a lot of the trendy, trendy things on, on Facebook or Instagram. I think we had talked about that before. You know, like you said, I, I even yeah. asked you, you know, what, what made you ask me to, you know, do this podcast and you said, well, I want to talk to, you know, real people. It doesn't have to be these elaborate, you know, gardeners or homesteaders or right. trust fund people, but <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, you know, getting started, um, coming up with a plan, learning the zone that you're in, um, you know, with what to plant during this, you know, whatever month, uh, and just doing it. And you'll, you'll find yourself, you know, loving something that you never thought you, you would before and probably t- telling yourself, wow, why didn't I start this sooner? Um, but it's never too late to start, I guess. So I, I it's would never say that. too late. Yeah. It really no, that's isn't. good. It, it never is too uh, late. I haven't heard the answer of, um, coming up with a plan before. Not that I'm not that I remember, uh, but that's a good one because, it's at least for me anyways, it's very haphazard. Like, um, Oh, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to put the chicken coop over there. All right, cool. And then like, you know, a couple of months go by, I think I'm going to do a couple of uh, garden beds over there. And then like, well, now the chicken coops in the way of what I want to do next. And then like mm-hmm. those garden beds don't work there anymore. Like it gets shaded by the house. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think, that I was think a bad, another, that was a bad idea. Right. I think another thing is just, um, you know, have that have that idea that you may fail, you know, one year and don't get discouraged by that. You know, nothing's absolute sometimes, especially with a garden. So mm-hmm. just prepare yourself to, you know, some some things may not work out one year and then, OK, you can regroup for next year and learn how to do something, how to, bet you know, make it better or say, you know what, I really don't eat this 
you know, I really, I'm really not a radish person. So maybe I shouldn't plant those this, you know, that next year. Maybe I'll plant something else that I, I like eating um, more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not, I don't want to be doom and gloom, but just prepare yourself. If, if things do go, you know, if they don't go your way, don't get discouraged by it and don't, don't quit. Don't be like, well, my garden wasn't good last year. So I really don't want to do it this year. Um, you know, just keep continuing on. And I don't think everyone, you know, I think even these master gardeners, they're probably learning stuff too. And they're, you know, probably they older. Have to be. Yeah. It's, it's a learning experience for a lifetime. Um, you know, I mean, how did, how did our ancestors here, you know, get through the crazy times? They just continue doing it. They probably had where it was worse off. You know, they didn't have the comfort of YouTube to learn stuff. They just had to do it. Right. Um, yeah, they just had to learn, talk to their neighbors, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. Um, trade, barter, whatever. Yeah, barter, trade, sell. Uh, I, I really like doing that. I have a I have a neighbor next door to me. She her husband hunts, so it's like, oh hey, you want to give me a couple things of deer meat? Here's some eggs. So that's always pretty fun. That's a sweet deal for you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> And it didn't have to go uh, do all the work of hunting. Like, yes, there's a joy in hunting, but also if you don't enjoy hunting, you just like the deer meat. Like, that's a sweet deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I provide them with eggs, and they're oh yeah, we got some deer meat. We haven't we we because uh, it's only them. It's they don't have any children. It's just a couple, and and he sure. he has bird dogs, and he goes and hunts and brings back a whole elk or something. And so she is like, hey, we nice. we don't this deer meat so you can have it that would be a, a little bit for uh two people especially if you get more than one or something but um right yeah i always i somehow get the better end of the deal but she's right. she's fine with it like oh, okay yeah, whatever yeah. yeah whatever that's that, that's great so that's a good thing too is is um you know a lot of people don't really want to get to know, know their neighbors and you don't have to know everybody you know on your street mm -hmm. but definitely a couple that you you trust and you you like being around and you know if you you can barter with them or something just go ahead and you know just do it because they, they probably won't say no um most of the time yeah people people like free stuff free I, homemade yeah. stuff yeah um is there anything that we didn't cover uh that you'd like to that they, that you'd like to mention or anything I think we covered all of them. I remember looking at the, at your questions before we started this, and I can't think of of one we may have missed. We didn't miss any. I was just I just didn't know if uh, there was something that you're like something came to mind. Oh yeah, I want to talk more about that. Uh, I'll I'll go back on the homeschooling um, because yeah. that that's been a big thing going on with. Oh, I hate going being political, but. Go for it. Let's just go. Uh, you know, well, yeah, let's just go for it. I believe this day and age when it comes to schools, I don't see them getting any better. Just with what's going on Agreed. now, of what's being taught to four and five-year-olds is absolutely asinine that our country is allowing what's going on, being taught to look. Little kids don't need to know what, what I'm actually, you know, uh, I'm not going to say it, but just the, the generosity sure. that they're, that they're promoting for little children. That's not school. That's indoctrination and little children don't need that. So if you're somebody who is thinking of, of homeschooling your kid, um, pull them out, just do it. Uh, if you're in a different state, if they have some sort of restrictions, see what they are, find, find groups of moms that are in that state who are homeschool and learn how they're doing things because I, I don't, I don't see it getting any better uh, school wise for little children. And it's, they're, they're going to be the next generation. And if their, their little minds are, are destroyed by what they're learning in public school, then we're, we're going to be doomed. So that's why I do that in my house. <clears throat> so I, I would, it, it's not to encourage, 
it's yes, encourage encourage uh, people to do home setting, but also if you're interested in homeschooling, another the sky's the limit with that. There are so many resources where you could. Um, I have friends on on Twitter that love to give advice on that. So. Uh, yes. And when, man, it's it's actually pretty sad that more parents like don't take more like control over their like children's like education because if you if you knew what your kids are being taught and like we don't even have to go to the extreme of like degeneracy or whatever uh, deviancy whatever like there's gonna be something in the school that you're not okay with mm-hmm. and like it doesn't even have to be that big of a thing you can just be like I, I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. I'd rather my kid not know that, or they don't need to know that, or why are they wasting their time? Like, oh, I don't want my kid to be stuck inside for eight and a half hours and they get half an hour outside and then back inside. Um, and like, you should take control of your kid's edu- education, 100%. Um, there's got to yeah. be something that bugs you about that system. Like it's a, you know, it's awful. It's an awful system. Stop the it, bottom. It really, it really is. It's the what the term is is you're told. Oh, homeschooling is is the experiment. No, it's not. Homeschooling was a norm. Public mm. school is the experiment, and it's it's designed for a certain purpose. It's not to educate. It's to indoctrinate children. Um, you know, and a lot of, you see a lot of videos on Twitter of, of parents, you know, storming those school board meetings and saying, oh, I don't like them, you know, teaching this or whatever. Yeah. That's great that you kind of, you know, stood up to the the school board, but if you're going to turn around the next day and take your, your kid to school, what are you really doing? Right. You, you, you rabble, rabble, up. rabble. <laughs> yeah. Rabble, rabble, rabble. You know, you did your viral video. Cool. Great. But if you didn't turn around and say, you know what, I'm pulling them out tomorrow and there's no going back. But a lot of people, a lot of, you know, parents may be discouraged. They may think they're ill qualified to teach their kids or maybe they they like having that convenient style of I get to go to work. My kids are gone for eight hours a day and they come home, they do their homework and then it's all over again. Well, when you get to really spend time with your children. You know, how many hours are they at school? Add that up to how many how many times you're with them during the week. They spend more time at school than they are with you. Yeah. So, yeah, really, it's the state is taking care of your child. And we don't want that. I don't want that for my kids. I want them to be with me. I don't want them to be with some stranger for eight hours a day. Um, you know, learning stuff that I can teach them myself you know, school subject wise, not all the other nonsense that they are, that they're being told, you know, they know what they're doing, that it's mm-hmm. all been for a purpose to, to do this to little kids. It's been from the very get go. Um, and in a way, get back to basics to, to teaching your child. It doesn't take much. Um, if you're able to, and that's, a, that's another thing, and it might be a little controversial, but, you know, with working moms, if you're if you're working, you're spending a lot of money just with child care already. Let's say if you have a little one that goes to daycare, that's a good maybe a thousand, what, a thousand dollars, maybe, maybe a week, maybe more. So yeah. that could be something you're saving. If you if you left the workforce, you'd be saving a lot of money and you'd be able to be at home with your kid um, teaching them yourself. That's how we did uh, it. Yeah, that's awesome. It's that's the way to do it because I just like I said, it, it's maybe controversial. Maybe a lot of friends would be like, "Well, why are you why are you saying that?" Well, it's just the truth. Um, you know, a mom a mom should be at home with their kids. You know, the mom is a nurturer, especially with the children. You know, she's she nurtures or the kids. Were you know the woman is more uh, we're supposed to be more gentle and um, so. And it's another you're you're called to, uh, biblically, to be at home with your kids. Um, It doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, oh, yeah, have this person teach your kids. No, it says parents teach your children 
all over Proverbs. Um, and, and a lot of people, they don't want to give up their, I guess their, um, their extra, what is it called? It's another word that's like on the tip of my tongue and I can't say it. They just don't want to. They, they want their time to themselves and. Right. Yeah. They don't, they yeah. don't want to sacrifice anything. They like their luxury. There it is. They like their luxury yeah. of, of, um, you know, it, it, if it all comes down to maybe sell that fancy car, maybe cut that cable, cable out and save money. And, and another thing, another excuse that you hear is, oh, well, you are, um, you know, it takes a lot of money to homeschool a kid. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, you, oh, they say, oh, well, you have to be privileged in order to um, homeschool your kid. No, most the majority of homeschoolers are on a one income, yet they still yep. do it. Um, so it's it's sacrifice. I'm being a little redundant, but it t- it takes a lot of sacrifice. I experienced it with my with my uh, parents, and they buckled down and they they saw the benefit it was for us, <clears throat> for it would be in the long run, then we'd be at school. Um, was it hard? Yeah, it was really hard for them. Sometimes my mom cried because it was a lot of work. Sometimes we weren't the most ruly children. We, uh, you know, we had our rebellious streak sometimes with, I don't, I don't want to do this. And I thought right. she, she'd give up sometimes and she didn't. She was a pioneer. She, she just went all the way. <clears throat> and here she is turned around and she's helping me with my kids. Uh, teaching them because kids are an investment like they're the they're the biggest investment you will ever make and they will give you the greatest return on investment if you do it right um because if you just d- put in no investment like you just turn your kids over to the state for their education you're gonna get a poor return on investment like it's a weird way to look at it but honestly like it's you you it's a way it is a way to look at it um like if you like put more time into educating your kids yourself they're like almost guaranteed to come out better on the other side like there's there's really no other way but up than the uh than the government school system so mhm yeah yeah children aren't like little puppy dogs that you can you know they're not pets. They're your, your children are your legacy. And so Mm -hmm. they're going to be paving the way of whatever legacy you left behind with how you, how you raised your kids. And that's how, that's how generations turn out to be good or bad. Um, So, and that's the thing. They don't realize that, you know, your child, your, your child deserves the best. And Mm -hmm. I understand it may not be, in the cards with homeschooling at the time, but just, I mean, I I just don't see the idea of having to deprogram your kid from what they learn at school when they come home. Um, I just, I just couldn't see myself doing that. And like you said, they, they really are an investment. They're your legacy. So devote more time to them because, you know, and little children, they, they need to have their innocence. Um, right. They don't need to grow up so fast in learning things they don't need to know. Children are children. They're, they're a gift from, from God and they're blessings. They're not burdens. Uh, that's another th- kind of trendy thing you see on, on the Instagram or whatever of how these mothers are just so thankful that they're getting rid of their kids after the summer or, you know, the wine it's kind mom. Of disgusting. It, it is disgusting. It's getting, it's just getting worse. And, and, you know, you really think about that about your kids. You know, are you are you that much of a, you know, awful human being to think that of your of your children that you're just so ready to get rid of them, you know, for whatever you're going to be doing all day long. I don't know, getting drunk on wine or or whatever. That's yeah. a, that's another thing. These wine moms just it, it's really disgusting, and uh, you know, it's the the joys of seeing the internet sometimes and all the trash that comes up mm-hmm. from it <clears throat> if you spent more time with your kids you might actually like them absolutely yeah you know maybe you'll learn something from them and how much they want to be around you i mean every child wants to be around yeah. their kid and the, their parents um maybe i don't know 
I don't have teenagers yet. Uh, I'm enjoying them being young right now. <laughs> mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, they really are. My, my wife gets upset that my, that my son, he's just over two. He's like, he's too big. He's too big. <laughs> like the last, the, it doesn't even feel like he's two. Like he, it feels like the last like two years just flew by. And um, yeah, I mean, it goes quick. It goes quick. Like, what do they say? Like you only get like 18 summers with your kids or whatever. Like, and two of those, two of those 18 are already gone for, for my first. So I better make yeah. the next 16 really count. You know, when you really hear that, that is an eye opener. It's a gut punch. Yeah. That, that is a gut punch. And then you think about, dang, how, well, have I done enough with them? Have I, you know, instilled in them? And a, especially a, a, a Christian parent, you know, I, I, my, my main job is, yes, we homeschool. I don't want my kids to be little geniuses where they go around, they, you know, they can run circles around a public school. I want my kids to, to love Jesus and share about Jesus and be good human beings out in the world. Um, Cause that's what a parent is supposed to do. Raise responsible mm -hmm. um, adults when they are older um, and, you know, being a good person in society but at the, at, you know, really to um, instill in them biblical values, love the Lord. Like it says in the Bible, love the Lord, your God, with all the heart, soul and mind. Um, that's what I, what my main goal is, is for my children, getting them in a good church uh, where they're learning about him, uh, reading his, reading his word, hearing that at home, seeing their parents read the Bible to them. Um, that is more important than, than, you know, the other things first and foremost <clears throat> is right. that. The other thing I was going to say about, you know, putting time in with your kids, the, the investment aspect, I kind of wanted to clarify a little bit. It's not so much like investment, like, okay, I put all this time into you. Now you have to do something for me. It's more like we're, we're or I think people, a lot of people get it wrong is that they work really hard and save up all this money to basically just give their kids money. And hopefully that that money will solve any issues that uh, come down the road for the kids. Now, Money helps out a lot for sure. Not going to lie about that. But when your kids can't do anything, like they have no skills, mm -hmm. money doesn't fix no skills. <laughs> like mm -mm. I, if I, if I do it right, if I give my kids knowledge and skills, they're going to be fine. There's going to be struggles, but everyone goes through struggles. Yeah. Um, they're not going to need me anymore. That if I set them up for success in that way, like, any anything that they get themselves into, they can get themselves out, and they won't need money to do it. Mm -hmm. If they no. if they made their money uh, through their skills and knowledge, and they can buy their way out of whatever, uh, well, then that's different because they had the money or the the skills and knowledge to to get there. So, no, I absolutely agree. Um, yeah, money money doesn't money doesn't solve everything. Um, it's not, it's not always, uh, absolute there's, I, I've heard that too, where, you know, a lot of girls, they don't want to marry somebody unless he has a lot of money. Well, what, what about the vows of for richer or poor? You're never going right. to, you're not always going to have that wealth. I guess if you're, if you're going towards that, things aren't mm -hmm. absolute happen. Your husband may lose, lose his job. So you're not going to have that income all the time and you got to really buckle down and figure out how to, you know, live a certain way. It may not be, you know, like I said, your luxuries will most likely be gone. So it's a, it's a learning curve of, of that too um, with, with finances. Mm -hmm. It's not always going to be a set. Oh, yeah, we'll make, you know, six figures every, every year. You don't know that down the road. You may not. Um, that's, that happened to us one time. My husband had a great job. He, uh, we, uh, and really we squandered a lot of it. We could have saved so much, but we thought we were living the high life. And then next year, boom, that job is gone. 
okay, so now we got to do something else. And, um, you know, re rely on different things and not, yeah. and not money. <clears throat> yeah. And if you want to take it to the extreme on uh, not, not having that money. So like, uh, a while ago, my sister went on like one or two dates with like this billionaire son and she finally like cut it off and she's like, you're a spoiled brat. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, uh, what if, okay. So what if the kid inherits that money, right? Or the fortune or the everything around it and something, something happened. Uh, he's wanted on like a white collar crime something IRS, something SEC, something, something, literally anything. And like, so all those bank accounts get frozen, all the assets get frozen, stuff gets taken away, seized, whatever. What good did your money do when you can't access it, right? Um, and then if you were with him for just for his money, you're just as screwed or more mm -hmm. so. Because at least maybe he had the connections. Your connection was through him not mm -hmm. not on your own so yeah I, I i feel like that would be too much of a burden if i would have so much because with people who have a lot of wealth they got to make sure that they maintain it you know and yeah, yeah more money more problems <laughs> yeah you still have to maintain it you still got to kind of watch your back with things and and learn how to invest or whatever and i just that's a headache to me um i'd rather just <laughs> Be broke and happy, or what is the? It's like an Alanis Morissette song. It's like I'm broke but I'm happy. That's my mentality. <laughs> I'd rather there you have go. than be super, um, you know, wealthy. My wealth is my my family and my my children and my life that I've, you know, God has given me and blessed with, and that's where I find yeah. true success. Wealth is that, and not money that can buy whatever stupid thing that will you know will burn up one day <clears throat> right in the end 100 percent agree well yeah i'm uh i think that's that's a great note to wrap up on unless you had more we can we didn't even go that political we should have gotten way worse yeah, we didn't get so we could have said so much but let let the let the <laughs> heads do all that i'm just that's exhausting to there me. you go i'd rather talk about chickens than than politics those that is my politics is chickens if you want to say my politics <laughs> is is chickens yeah yeah Ch chicken chickens uh, uh there's a joke in there somewhere about chickens making more sense when they talk than the talking heads or something i don't know mm -hmm. put yeah. it a little put it at a little desk in the teleprompter or something like that right in front of a chicken um <laughs> But yeah, hey, let's uh, let's plug your stuff. It is, I think, it's pretty. It's a pretty short list. It's just uh, on Twitter at slowcheetah thirty, and no website. I no. Have one, What's well, I do? I do have one page. Um, it is on Twitter and on Instagram. It's Coop Queen. That's my that's my cookie business, and I share my pictures there. I think it's what's Coop, it called? Coop Queen. Coop Queen. Coop Queen. Um, Someone actually on Twitter made me the design for my for my business cards. Uh, oh, well. and, yeah, Anne Marie, I, I'll she'll probably hear this later, but she designed it for for me. And it's a it's a black and white uh, design. It's a chicken, and then there's a crown on top of the chicken. So she called me, she calls me the Coop Queen, and so that's, that's my funny. my business. I make cookies and I also sell eggs. So it all kind of worked out. I will maybe uh, I'll try to find that, or maybe you can link it to me, and I will um, also put that in the show notes with yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll send you the link with your oh. with your primary account. So yes. Well, cool. Hey, I appreciate uh, your time this afternoon. Um, it's been an awesome conversation. I really appreciate appreciate you being here. And maybe Thank you maybe for we'll meet up sometime. Yeah, totally. Uh, I've Montana's always been on my. Uh, list of travels um i probably would not even want to come back <laughs> if i <laughs> montana so but texas it's, is my it's, home. it's hard to leave that's yeah. fire yeah 
I bet. Yeah. We're actually we're actually hitting the road next year. So uh we're gonna we're gonna get in an R V and travel around uh oh, wow. see other homesteads and farms and stuff. So Wow, that'd be awesome. So kind of like Justin Rhodes uh American Farm Tour, kinda like that, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, American that's, Farm that's... Tour and Homestead Rescue combined. Okay. That's a thing now too. If, you, if you've seen that show. I've heard of the show, I have never seen it. When, but. when, when, when people need help on their homesteads, like we don't have water and like they truck it in like every other day from town or something and they go, oh, wow. get, well, it's a little bit extreme and it's on TV. So it's definitely like, uh, amped up. See, but that's my, that's my, speed. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I'm not a, a Chip and Joanna kind of, kind of, uh, that trend, I guess the homestead. Right. Be something really worth watching it's um, on uh it's on discovery um or if you have like discovery plus you could watch it there but okay it's it's not bad it's for what it is it's not bad okay well hey if you ever so. come down to Texas, um don't come here during the summer <laughs> i won't I... Fall. So if y'all are traveling come in the fall area and i can show you all around and you'll get a i'd love to uh we're pretty hospitable here in Texas. We're known for that. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Yeah, we, that'd be that'd be great to just meet up and get get shown around and help you uh, do some projects. I don't know if I would help your uh, tomatoes do any better, but <laughs> I could do something. Yeah. So, well, hey, yeah. uh, thanks again for your time, and we'll keep in touch. Yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you. All right. Great conversation. Great conversation with Slow Cheetah. She's clearly passionate about her family, her children, and her faith. It's so good to hear more people turning to the basic skills and wanting to know how to do more on their own. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video. You could be listening on Fountain.fm podcast player. Uh, this Got a great back end on, you know, gifting and boosting people Satoshis and, you know, giving um, podcast p podcasters uh, value for value. It's great. You should check it out. You'd probably like it better than your current podcast player. You can check out our website, farmhoplife.com. You can sign up for our email list or Telegram channel there to be notified when new videos, interviews, and podcasts are available. We are on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, MeWe, and Float. Send me a message at farmhoplife.com slash contact or send me an email anytime, matt at farmhoplife.com. Just give me some feedback. Tell me how I did. Tell me I sucked. I don't care. Uh, you can sign up for our, uh, you can check out our 20 by 23 project. It is where we are going to be helping 20 homesteads in the year 2023. And you can sign up at uh, farmhoplife.com slash 20x23. And I'm always looking for new people to interview. If you want to if you want to come in wow can't freaking talk if you want to come on to talk about homesteading farming food security homeschooling rich of agriculture alternative building methods you can go to farmhoplife.com slash guest and fill out the form go feed yourself inside of the city the people are crazy out of their minds they ain't got a clue Headed west for Montana Left family and friends All I got now is you We both got new jobs A host and a homestead Thinking this was the life All that there'd be After our firstborn You had to stay home That's when the work got in the way for me well, I started Farm Hop Life. You'll come to your farm to help and to wander. Me and the family, a truck and an RV, send us a message and there 